There is a new version of Droid Toolbox that's just come out. And I want to show you the new feature it adds, as well as the extra setup, or the, the additional setup to your Arduino environment uh, that's required in order to make use of this new feature. So here it is, it's version 0.65. And what I do is on the splash screen here, if I hold button one for a second or more and then let go, the font changes. And the font change will be there for all the screens, uh, except for the expert beacon mode. I've intentionally left that unchanged. But everywhere else, you'll see this new font. And I've added a few uh, different fonts to it that you can pick from, whichever one you think works best for you. And again, you just keep holding down that button one a second and then releasing it and it'll go to the next font and eventually it will cycle back to the first font. Uh, a couple of things to point out here. These fonts are true type fonts and it's using a library to render them. And as such, it's doing extra work to render those fonts. So you're going to notice there's a little delay when the screen refreshes. And that's because you're using these true type fonts. So if you want a very responsive display, uh, you probably don't want to use the extra fonts. But if you don't mind a little bit of a delay, then we can just power on right through. We can scan. And there's going to be no droids in the area here. We just got to wait for it to say so. We can choose different beacons. And you can even connect and you know make your droid play sounds or change its volume or whatever. All of that will be in this font. The library I'm using to render these fonts is called Open Font Renderer. And that is a new library that you're going to need to add to your Arduino environment in order to then compile the updated version of a droid toolbox. Alternatively, in the source code for Droid Toolbox, there is a define called a, a use OFR fonts. And if you remove that define or comment it out, then Droid Toolbox will compile without custom font uh, support. So you don't need to worry about all this extra setup. Uh, so you have options here, whether you want to enable this feature or not. And if you do enable this feature, you're probably going to ask, uh, well, can I add my own custom fonts as well? Yes, you can. Um, you'll need to look at the Open Font Renderer uh, GitHub repository. It will help you figure out how to do some of that. Um, in the source code itself, I also have comments where you set the list of fonts that are available. I have sort of shortcuts, you know, do this step, do this step, do this step, and you're done, sort of thing. Um, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. I'm not looking at adding custom fonts in this video because it's outside the scope of this video. All I want to do in this video is just show you how to set up your Arduino environment so you can compile uh, the updated Droid Toolbox with this new library requirement. So now I'm going to switch over to... Uh, my Arduino environment and walk you through setting this all up. Everything I'm about to do here I'm doing on a Macintosh but the same steps will be relevant if you're on a Windows machine or a Linux machine so my goal here is to get the latest version of the Droid Toolbox code and also the open font render library, install the library, compile the code and install it on my T display. The first thing I'm going to do is go to GitHub to the Droid Toolbox repository where the source code for Droid Toolbox is and I am going to download the code from GitHub. And then I can open up the zip file here go into it here are all the files I'm just gonna select them all copy them and then go to the location where my droid toolbox code is and it's here and I will paste into there 
Now, I didn't need to copy everything, but just to keep life simple, I'm going to copy everything. I want to replace the old version of the INO file that was there. And that is going to get me the updated code on my computer. But I still need to get the open font renderer library. So what I can do is open up the program. And it's complaining that the INO file is not in a directory of the same name. And what's happened here is if we go back, look at the directory that it's in. It has a capital B for toolbox, and I don't have a capital B for the INO file here. So I'm going to rename the directory so that it has a lowercase b. And now, whether I double-click on the INO file or open it up from within the IDE, it should now hopefully open up. And there it is. And no longer is it just an INO file. Now you see a bunch of other files as well. These .h files, these header files, contain the different fonts that I've added to the, um, the Droid Toolbox. So that is why those are there. If we go back into the, the main program, the INO file, and if we scroll down a little bit here to required Arduino libraries, I have a link for Open Font Renderer, which if I click on that link takes me to GitHub, where the Open Font Renderer is. And just like I was doing for the Droid Toolbox code, I'm going to download the zip file for that. And now I'm going to open up that zip file that I just downloaded. And I'm going to copy the whole directory. Go into my libraries folder for Arduino. There is the TFT ESPI library. Well, now I need to paste in there the open font render library. Now, because I downloaded this from GitHub, it has this dash master in the name here. I want to get rid of that. The folder should just be called open font render, not open font render master. Good. And that should be that. So now it should be just a matter of going into the IDE and we'll select our board here. Um, I'm going to put this on a T display S3. And with the latest update of the ESP32 core, um, it adds support for the T-Display S3 directly. Uh, but if you don't have the latest version and it's not in the list of boards, you can always just use the ESP32 S3 dev module. Either one will work. And now I'm just going to hit compile to compile the sketch, make sure there are no errors, make sure that it can see that that open font render library is there. Compiling the sketch may take a little while depending on how fast your computer is. Uh, this probably will take a couple of minutes just because there's a lot of different things to compile. If you go into the preferences of your Arduino IDE, you can enable verbose output for compiling and uploading so you can see everything that's going on so you can feel comfortable that at least something is happening um, I've just turned it on so the next time I compile this to upload it we'll see all the extra information anyways uh, it looks like it's compiled fine it looks like uh, there were no errors which is exactly what I was expecting so the next step then is to plug in my T display or T display s3 and program it. So I'm going to plug in the, the T Display S3 in this case, or the T Display if that's what you have, to my computer here. And now I need to come over to the Arduino IDE and I need to set the port that the uh, T3 is on. And there it is right there. And then just hit the upload button. And because I set the verbose output for compiling and uploading in the Arduino IDE preferences, uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff now going on in the output window of the Arduino IDE. And now it is uploading. 
the screen has gone blank on the T display. The upload is complete. The new version of Droid Toolbox has been installed and now it supports custom fonts. If all you're looking is to update your Droid Toolbox, you are all set. This video is done for you. Um, but what I want to do now is I want to add another font to the Droid Toolbox and I want to take you through that process. To add a new font to the Droid Toolbox, the first thing I need to do is find a font that I want. Uh, for this video, I am going to go with um, Orec fonts, I think they're called, on GitHub. And these have a bunch of different uh, Orbesh fonts that you can pick from. So I'll just take a quick peek through the ones that are free for commercial and personal use. And find something that looks interesting. How about this Trade Federation font? That looks interesting. And this is free for personal and commercial use, so I'm going to download this. This is going to be a an OTF file. Um, what is it open typeface? Or open type font? We'll worry about that in a little bit. All right, so I've downloaded the font. Now what? We come to a section here in the code that deals with custom fonts. And I have a quick 1-2-3 guide here on how to take your font file and convert it into something that we can use in this program. So the first step, because it's an OTF file and I need to convert it to a TTF, I'm going to click on this first link here. That's going to bring me to a website where I can convert this to a TTF file, which is what I will do now. Take my OTF file, open that, click Convert, download, and now I have a TTF file. Good. Step two talks about reducing the font file down to something that only contains the characters we need. Some true type and open type fonts will contain hundreds of characters, and we really only need like 40 or 50 characters and so to reduce file size we sort of want to limit the the characters to just those that are here in this list so do I need to do this step to reduce the number of characters in the font file well if I go back and look at my uh, now TTF file I can see it's only seven kilobytes in size and just from personal experience uh, anything under 20 kilobytes 30 kilobytes maybe isn't going to have a lot of characters in it and you don't have to worry about this conversion step or this uh, step to remove everything but a certain subset of characters so I'm going to skip that step in this case and now I need to convert it to a header file so I'll click on this link here and all I'm doing here now is giving it a file and it's going to convert it into a series of, of bytes that I can then create a header file from. Uh, I want to uncheck uh, static, click convert, and I can take this that's this uh, file that's been generated down below and save it. And now I'm going to go back into my downloads directory, copy that H file, and then bring it over to my Droid Toolbox directory and paste it. And there it is. And now if I go into the Arduino IDE, magically, it is there. So now what? Um, I need to do some work on this file here, not too much. Um, the type of uh, variable that it's defining, I want to change to an unsigned char like that. Um, the naming convention, I'm going to get rid of the underscore. You don't have to. It doesn't matter. That's just me. And I also would like to make a reference here as to where I got this font from in case there's ever any uh, 
questions about where it came from. So there's the URL. And I'll just copy that little copy, that creator message. And paste it there. And I can use the other header files as examples. And I can switch back and forth just to make sure everything looks similar. With the font file done, I'm going to go back into the INO file here. And I want to go to the top of the code. And we have a section here of include statements. And I need to add a new one for that new header file we just added. All right, and then I need to come down further. I need to look for a section that says, uh, talks about custom fonts. Here it is, custom fonts. And if I keep going down further, I need to add a new line here. TF Gunray Bold is the variable name that we set in that header file. And I'm I also need to add a size of command here. And you can just copy the line above if you aren't sure what to type in here. Uh, these last two variables, these are numbers, we will worry about them later. And that should do it. So now it should be just a matter of waking up my Droid Toolbox to make sure it hasn't gone to sleep come into tools make sure I select the port for it and hit upload okay there we go the updated code with the new font should be installed now let's see if the new font took The next one should be the new font. And there it is. And you know what? That actually looks pretty good, even <laughs> without adjusting those variables at all. Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with how this came out. I may have to just do a quick update to version uh 0.66 and throw this in there because this looks really good so there you go that is the process for adding a new custom font to droid toolbox uh, as well as how to update your droid toolbox to the latest version which may by the time you're watching this video be version 0.66 instead of 65 because i think i want to go add this font to it because it turned out really nice and i like the way it, it, it looks so there you go that's it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below or contact me, Twitter, email. The Galaxy's Edge Discord server is probably the best way because if I'm not around, there are plenty of other people around that can help answer questions. Good luck. Have fun.